Hello and welcome back to Math 7 with Mr. Passon. Today we are covering percent of change. There are lots of applications of percent of change. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about them and hopefully a lot of the interesting will come up or a lot of the interesting ones will come up as we go along. Go ahead and click the link to the slides and make a copy. I've already got one open here. So I'm going to change my view to 200% and we're going to take a look. So, first of all, what is percent change? Percent change describes the change over time either by an increase or a decrease alright so our change is how the uh, how something changes we're often going to think of like money changing so oh it would help if I spelled increase correct or a decrease good now so if we wanted to think about the change relative to the initial size right like if I get 1% bigger or 2% bigger or 10% bigger or 100% bigger um, then I can compare my growth rate to someone else even though they're starting out at a different size than I am now the most important formula that you're gonna to need to know today is this one right here and you want to be able to memorize this one so we're gonna say it a few times so we're gonna set up our percent proportion except for instead of part over whole it's going to be change over original. So percent over 100 equals change over original. So percent change, we have to remember change over original. Now when we talk about how much something changes, most of the time we're going to think of subtraction. Okay, so a change we should think of as a subtraction. Um, and then a change can be represented by a difference. So remember, difference in math is a subtraction. Um, I'm going to go ahead and highlight that and see if I can format that slightly so it looks in the right spot. Eh, I guess that's as good as it's going to get right now. So uh, change can be represented by the difference between the new and the original value. So we're generally going to think of it as the new minus the original. Okay, now we're going to use these to calculate a couple different situations. Uh, so we're going to complete the table. So first, let's read the situation. A gallon of milk costs $2.79 in the year 2000, and in 2015, it costs $3.98. So the original price, the old price, is $2.79. The new price is $3.98. The change, well, that's going to be the new minus the old, so $3.98 minus $2.79, and that looks like it's $1.19 when we do our subtraction. There's some regrouping there. So our percent proportion, we're going to think of our percent over 100 is going to equal our change over the original which is two dollars and seventy nine cents so the first thing we want to do is we want to calculate this division I'm gonna pull in a calculator here uh, so let's go ahead and take 119 divided by 279 and we get a crazy kinda of complicated number here but we're gonna think of it as a percent and then we're going to round it to the nearest answer. So we get our P is about uh, 0 0.42. And I already forgot what the rest of it was. 4265. Which is 42.7% if we round there. So this becomes 0.427, which is 42.7%. Let's go ahead and, well, that was an increase, right? And our solution was that it was 42.7%. Okay, let's look at our next example. A frozen pizza cost $3 in 2000, and in 2015 it cost $2.50. So the original price is $3. The new price is $2.50. 
the change. Well, it went down 50 cents. Notice that I'm still treating it as a positive number even though it went down. We can set up our formula, though maybe I should write out the formula all nice and pretty like. So we can think about what's going on there. And remember that it's change over original. All right. Now for us, it's P over 100 equals our change is 0 0.5 divided by the original is $3. We do that and we get our P equals 16.6666 repeating. And we're going to round that a little bit later. Oh, sorry. This one, our P, when we divide, so this was P over 100 equals that. So when we convert it to a percent, we get the 42.7. Sorry, I forgot about moving the decimal there. So this was a decrease, and it was about 16. 0.7%. Now, we're often going to round our answers, and we're going to let the people tell us where to round our answers, because there is a rather big deal about where to round in different cases, um, and we're not going to cover that too much this year. But later, you'll talk about accuracy versus precision and where you need to round. It is kind of a big topic, though. All right, a movie t ticket costs $8.20 in 2000. So we've got $8.20, and then it costs $10.65. All right, now the change in the price. Let's do our subtraction. So we can do $10.65 minus $8.20. That's $2.45. We can grab this equation because we're going to use it again. All right, so we can then calculate. So our P divided by 100, not 110, 100, equals 245 divided by the original, which is my 820. Let's do that division. Uh, this was an increase. Let me grab that calculator. 245 divided by 820. Oh. 245 divided by 820, and we get 29.87, so 29.9%. So again, remember, you can do this division and then convert your decimal into a percent by multiplying by 100, which is moving the decimal to places. All right, now, uh, when we do this activity in person, I was planning on you guys doing the activity uh, as X's in, or as a game of tic-tac-toe. You had to get the problem right, and then you could get your answer. Um, uh, so, let's go ahead and work through these, uh, and we're going to work through them rather quickly. So, I'm going to set up the equation, but what I'd like you to do is just try to set up the equations first yourself, and... Um, yeah, then we're going to go ahead and talk about the answer. So, pause the video here, work through um, at least six of them, but you can pick which six, and then we'll go over them. Okay, welcome back. So, here we're going to always think about we're starting with our equation that looks something like this. So, for every problem, we're going to think about that model. Now, I should make it just a little bit smaller, so that way I've got some workspace in there. So I'm going to shrink that down just a little bit, so that way we can uh, do the work for each one. So this one, our P divided by 100 is going to equal, well, what was our change? It went from 25 to 19, so that was a change of 6 divided by uh, 25, 
we can do that division. When we get that, we get our P. It was a 24% decrease. So if you can set up this equation, we'll talk about how to solve it, but the important part is that you can set up the equation in place. Here we've got our P divided by 100 equals 30 divided by 40. So that is going to give me my P equals 75% increase. Uh, marked down from 150 to $100. So we've got our P divided by 100 equals 50, the change, divided by the original, which is 150. And that's going to be 33.3. And the 3 is repeating, so we're probably going to think of that as 33.4%. Right? We're probably going to round that. Uh, I can't do the overline here nicely, but we could think of it as 33.3 with the repeat symbol over it. Let's think about this one here. Again, we're looking for the P divided by 100 equals the change, which is $2, divided by the original which is two dollars. Alright, so that's going to be our P equals a hundred. Now that is what we call a markup, right? It's a markup of a hundred percent because they buy it for two dollars and sell it for four dollars. Let's think about this one. Our P divided by a hundred equals what's our change it went from 30 minutes to 24 minutes so that's a six minute change divided by 30 so that is p equals 20 percent it's a 20 percent uh, decrease now this one i'm sorry i forgot to mention oh, i didn't write it in it was an increase because it was a markup this one it went down, so that was a decrease. Now this one is a little different. So here we actually know the percent. So let's go ahead and figure out our percent. That is 15 divided by 100. Now this is going to represent the change, the change in the number of 7th graders. Um, so let's go ahead and we don't know that, but we do know that the original is 280. So let's go ahead and multiply by 280. So if we do our 15 divided by 100, that's our 0.15. So our 0.15 times 280 is 42. So the change is 42 students. All right. So let's take our 280 minus our 42 students, and we get that there are 238 students now. So our x equals 238 students. Not our x. We have 238 students. Our x was actually our 85. Not our 85. Our What was our number? 42. Now, another way to do that is to say, well, if we had 15% less, then we have 85 students. So we could think of this as 85 over 100, and that equals x over 280. And if we did 85 times 200, or 85, oh, made that way too big. So we do our 85 divided by 100, which you'll notice again, oh, let me move that onto the screen so you can see, is 0.85 and then we multiply by our 280, we get our 238 right away. So we get 238 students because it's 85% of the previous year. So there's two different ways to think about it. You could find the change and then subtract, or you could find the percent that remains and do it as a just percent problem. So uh, I suppose we should focus on the changes because that's the new method, what we're focusing on here, but uh, enrollment in the PTA increased by 35%. Last year there were 160 members. 
how many PTA members are involved this year. Okay, so our change is 35, or sorry, our percent is 35. So we could do 35 over 100 equals our change. Maybe I'll call it C for change, divided by 160. If we solve that, we know we get rid of a division by multiplying. So let's go over here and do 160 times 35 divided by 100. There are 56 new members, so we've got uh, the original 160 plus 56. That's going to be 216 members. Okay, so after we found the change, we added the change to the original to get the total. To visit the top of the Empire State Building, a ticket cost $4 in 1999. The price was raised to $20. What is the percent change? So, oh, that's going to be a big number. So our P divided by 100 equals the change. So it went up $16 divided by $4. And when we solve that, our P equals 400%. So it's a 400% increase. That's a big change. Uh, Tom's weekly salary increased from 240 to 288. So the change was $48. Right? And we're going to divide by our 240. When we do that, we get uh, that equals 0 0.2. What is that as a percent? That is 20%. Okay? So if you can find the change in the original, do that quick division, you get your percent very quickly. Go ahead and summarize today's lesson. Put a little box here. Uh, I will be collecting some notes this week, so make sure to take good notes, fill it out. Write a nice summary for me that your English teacher would be proud of. I do appreciate that. And I'll see you next time. Don't forget about the assignment in Alex.